Fortnite's The Apocalypse Chapter 79 is currently out, and obviously, it was another really awesome chapter. We got to see more of Arthur fighting and just to show how strong he is, but we also get a nice little surprise in this chapter and set up for another big fight that is going to happen within the next chapter. And honestly, this chapter had me scratch my head in terms of what is going on in the best way possible, where I'm just nothing but hyped throughout the entire chapter. And honestly, so much stuff happens that I just don't know how to describe it at this point. So let's just hit that intro and get right into the review. Chapter 79 of the Fortnite the Apocalypse titled Hyperion. We start off directly from last week where Arthur goes to slash behind Meliodas to deal a finishing blow as he is trying to hold down Tristan from his berserker state. Percival sees this and cries out to Meliodas. As we then cut back to Leona's castle to King Bartra's bedroom. As a vase falls down as we see Slater again, really nice to see him, asking what happened or what is wrong with Elizabeth. Meaning to those people that have doubted, which I don't think anyone doubted, this is Elizabeth. I don't know why we're hiding her face this entire time. But uh, yeah, she's saying that she's alright, but her hands have started quivering for some reason. And she calls out to Thetis, saying that she has some sort of dreadful feeling that something bad has happened. And uh, we got Thetis' character design. If you remember, I believe Pelio mentioned chapters ago to call out to someone named Thetis about the, I believe it was the poison from Malascula, I believe, during the whole fight against the Revived Commandments. So now we finally get a face to the name. But as Elizabeth is asking for her help, she, she pauses for a second and then begins to laugh just out of nowhere. So I don't know what that's about. I'm going to get into Thetis in a second, as she does seem familiar, and people have been men mentioning the possibility of her being someone else. Let's just get right into the meat of the chapter, as we cut back to Arthur immediately, as we hear someone say, epic fail, as as Mal Maliotis notices, he was not cut, and Arthur realizes this too, and he's, and he's curious about this, as his sword was chipped away right before the slash. And then Tristan's demon powers go full out of control and starts going berserk even more, completely losing himself, breaking free of Meliodas' grasp and just breaking down onto this entire battlefield, just barely missing Percival, Donnie, Gawain, and Nazi ends, creating some more rubble in the process. As then someone holds up what appears to be the broken part of Arthur's sword, saying, you're a real pain in the, in the arse. Which I think, which is, I think, is a more British term saying pain in the ass. It's very possible we could get like a more of a British accent for the character since this is technically England. So we then see a line of life following Tristan as he is then engulfed by this light as it is Shining Road. And if you don't remember, earlier, earlier in the series when Lancelot was revealed, he used his ability to completely eradicate uh, the, the leader of the Dark Talismans. So you know how strong that ability is. So obviously he's holding back. So Tristan falls unconscious from getting hit with that blast. Meliodas runs forward and catches Tristan before he lands on the ground. As he states, stay with me Tristan, as Tristan is alright. But he keeps insisting that he can still fight. He wants to protect his home. But Meliodas just tells him it's alright, he did good enough, and he's just relieved that he's himself again. And Gawain is honestly kind of shocked, stating that he was able to stop him with one attack. As now Percival's like, was it you who called him over to his mini Percival golem? As apparently, if we think all the way back to the fight against Arthur when Percival uh, was uh, knocked away by him so easily, the Percival golems were saying change of plans. So these things still have intelligence of their own and can actually come up with ideas, maybe subconsciously from Percival for what we can tell, and he was the one that brought this particular character over to us. As someone leaps down from one of the stair rubbles, Arthur says, I suppose this is your doing, as he's pondering if he's met before, as he believes that he is one of the Four Knights of the Apocalypse, and that he's seen his face somewhere before, and it is revealed that Lancelot has finally joined the fray. It has been 
like over a month since Lancelot has been in the story, as we basically only focused on the Mela Gallon portion of the story and then Arthur showed up. I've been saying that Arthur is going to show up for a little while now, since Tristan started to go berserk, and I'm so glad that he's shown up. Percival, right now, Lancelot is the only person here who actually is like full power, like not injured at all. Like when Melascula and Gallant attacked, he didn't really fight. He just dodged the attacks and just messed with their heads. And in the dungeon with Jericho, he kind of dodged attacks, did a few blows here and there, but he wasn't really injured at all. So he's still the only character right now who is at 100% besides Meliodas with that one hit from before. This is hype because now all four knights are together again with the one that was with one of the core members, first member of the four knights outside of Percival to re reveal themselves here to fight off against the main villain. Arthur states, well, it doesn't matter. I was too on guard when I heard of you so-called knights of prophecy. The power of the old king's omens has diminished as well. When I came to assess you, it felt as though you just barely came up short. So he's, once again, he's underestimating the Four Knights as they're not as strong or as powerful as, you know, he was led to believe. But he's going to be proven somewhat wrong in, in a sec. Lancelot says, so you're King Arthur, I take it. As Arthur confirms this, Bonazian's like, no matter how strong Lancelot is, his opponent is extraordinary. He can't beat him one-on-one. -on -one as Percival is trying to struggle to bring himself to go and fight Arthur. And Gwen just says, that moron, he's dead. He Can't he even see the power gap between the two of them? We then get a small panel with Lancelot raising his hand and Arthur's nose beginning to bleed out of nowhere. Arthur doesn't even know what's going on, as then Lancelot punches him in the face, knocking him back a little bit, much to everyone's shock and surprise. I just love, like, Percival, Donnie, and Gawain's reactions, the most cartoonish ways possible, which fits the whole thing, like, everyone was struggling against Arthur, yet Lancelot managed to not only get him to bleed somehow, but also knocked him back and managed to hit him in the face without being blocked at all. As he calls out to Meliodas, calling him uncle, which makes a lot of sense, considering that Bon and Meliodas are kind of like brothers, s says to leave this to him, as Meliodas just tells Lancelot that he's got this. Though, you gotta take a look at Tristan's, uh, uh, appearance that he's kind of like, why won't you say that to me? I feel like that's what Tristan's thinking, thinking right now, which, it makes sense. His father's cheering for his best friend right now, and he's kind of, he's obviously a bit embarrassed that he kind of lost control right now, and he's not as strong as Lancelot. But this does state that maybe what Tristan stated before, when, during his introduction, that Lancelot is stronger than him, is in fact true. So, I'm excited to see what's gonna happen next. Arthur wipes away the blood and goes back. He then says the name Lancelot, you know, just to confirm the name, but Lancelot appears right behind him. As, he, as Lancelot just says, honestly, you don't need to remember my name. As long as I know you're King Arthur, that's all that matters. And even Arthur didn't notice that Lancelot was behind him. As Lancelot kicks Arthur in the back, knocking him forward. That's two hits, two clean hits that he managed to get on Arthur. Meliodas barely managed to get any hits in, so that's that's pretty impressive. Arthur's sword grows back as he says, I know we've never met, but did I do something to earn your hatred? As he swings his sword, carving into the ground and destroying one of the buildings right behind Lancelot. As Lancelot just nonchalantly dodges the slash, as he says, that sword, quite the magic tool you got. As Arthur goes on to talk about the sword, how often it may chip, how often it may break. A brand new blade takes the old one's place. My artifact of chaos, Carwanon. I think this sword is supposed to be called Hyperion because the chapter is called Hyperion, but I guess the name of the sword is Carwanon. So that's, that's an interesting thing. But then Lancelot moves up his hand and asks, what about these cutters then? As he reveals somehow, he manages to grab two of Arthur's teeth and yank him out as Arthur just all of a sudden starts spitting up blood from the teeth that were taken out right from his mouth without him noticing. As he's kind of wondering what the heck's going on. And I just love that the Gawain and Donnie are literally like, what the fuck is going on right now? Meliodas is just chuckling being like, he really gets his skills at teasing people from his dad. So yeah. Lancelot is kind of acting like Bond here. That's, that, that helps to why we all love Lancelot so much. But Tristan rem, tries to remind Meliodas, don't tell him that. He gets mad. Arthur wipes away the blood as he 
starts to use his chaos powers with his eyes changing, stating, you should be quite entertaining. And Lancelot points out the fact that the, that the power of chaos lets him regenerate. So, we kind of figured that. But then Lancelot brings up the biggest question of all, that we all kind of figured, but he brings it up anyway. Then why is your right arm still prosthetic? I heard it got eaten by some monster cat. As Arthur says, well, you're well learned. Yes, I was still young then. And this is my punishment to myself for my naivete and weakness. So Arthur is using a prosthetic arm so he can fight, but he's not regenerating his own arm as kind of a reminder of, you know, how young and naive he was as a young ruler, losing his arm to to Kath in the Seven Deadly Sins, as well as like his former ideals and thoughts just to prove that he's wrong. It, it's a it's it is a punishment to himself, which is something that I do like the clarification towards. But I think Nakaba Suzuki did say this in like an afterword, I believe, or an interview. But with that said, Lancer just says he doesn't really care. But come on, don't use this, that thing as an excuse for losing. As it seems like Arthur kind of smiles and smirks as he begins to do a barrage of random circular slashes around him and heads and engulfs towards Lancelot. As he says, what is youth? Ignorant, cruel, and pitiful. As we get a bunch of different panels showing everyone's reactions to this whole situation, to this whole attack. As we get here, see like something hit the ground. An, an upside down image of Lancelot and Arthur's face with someone's foot on someone's chest. Giving, leading us to believe that Lancelot got to deal a massive blow, but as we turn the page, Lancelot managed to knock down Arthur with no scratches on him to Arthur's just sheer shock. As Lancelot just says, you were saying, with the chapter ending. So, so not only did Lancelot manage to land two clean blows on Arthur, get him to bleed twice, one by some potentially um, a magical attack that managed to deal some internal damage, and yanking out his teeth without Arthur noticing, but Arthur Soma getting a bit more serious with a barrage of blows, he managed to avoid all those hits and somehow managed to knock Arthur down into the ground just without a single scratch on him. Arthur just got seemingly beat. Obviously this fight isn't over and something's gonna happen, either this is a clone of Arthur or Arthur isn't even going 100% as we all kind of figured, he's not using all of his powers. But this is a guy that managed to take down Tristan and Percival easily, and he managed to fight off Meliodas, who is the strongest character in the verse besides Arthur and Bon. But still, that is a huge feat in and of itself. So, my quick thoughts on how Lancelot managed to do this is a combination of his of two abilities. One, the ability to read minds that he inherited from his mother Elaine. He was able to read and dodge every single blow because Arthur thinks about what he's going to do next, and he manages to dodge at the very instance. Now how he managed to overpower Arthur, without Arthur knowing, is perhaps he does in fact he did in fact inherit the ability of snatch from his father Bon, so he kind of did perhaps a physical hunt type of ability to drain some of Arthur's uh, physical strength to help him dodge and weave around all his blows and knock him down. Now I'm going to make a video on Lancelot as a whole next week on how he's so strong or if he is really strong. Next week, since we are in fact on break next week and what, and honestly Nakaba, you, you gave us a really nice cliffhanger chapter for a break. You really know how to get, you are one of the masters of cliffhangers before breaks. So. Yeah, that is honestly something I did not expect. I was kind of hoping for this arc to conclude before anything. Before anything involving Arthur. But hey, let's see what happens next. And lastly, let me just talk very briefly about Thetis, because she could potentially be a video in and of herself in th through a bunch of speculation and probably a really short video. But there's speculation online that Thetis is Derriere's reincarnation. Now, if you remember... A few videos ago when Arthur was doing that vision to everyone in the kingdom about Camelot, there was a very small image of Moanspeed somewhere in that whole collage, I believe in the top left of that page, which, my apologies, I kind of, uh, that was an oversight on my part, I kind of had my, edit I had my editor at the time like zoom into the wrong photo, so my bad, I I'm thank you for everyone that for pointing that out, but 
it's mainly because of the hairstyle and perhaps like the uniform that she's wearing as it resembles a uniform design from like spin-off series AU for Seven Deadly Sins that Derriere wore is a similar thing and the hairstyle is kind of similarly like uh, you know spiked up and stuff like that honestly every, she was supposed to be reincarnated at the end of the Seven Deadly Sins thanks to Maya and Elizabeth so it would make sense for her to come back and play a larger role in this story and I kind of figured that Derriere would be somewhere in the Jonas just based off of the Moan Speed cameo tease in that big thing. If that is, is in fact a reincarnation of Derriere and still has her own memories, I would love to see how strong she is now as a human if, and how exactly she's going to help the main characters in the story as she's, not, she's given a name and got a whole panel dedicated to her reveal. So she's definitely going to be something to look, to look out for in this story. But what did you guys think of this chapter? What do you think of Lancelot being the only member of the Four Knights and even Meliodas to knock down Arthur to the ground and actually injure him multiple times and shock Arthur just without even realizing it? And what do you think of Thetis' whole, well, reveal? Do you think she's Derriere? Do you think she's just a random character? Let me know in the thoughts and opinions down below. It's just crazy that Lancelot managed to knock down Arthur twice. Meliodas managed to do that once with a really clean blow. And perhaps he could have done it more if Tristan did not interrupt. But either way, I am really happy with this chapter and I cannot wait for the next one in two weeks. So until then, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for updates on future videos. It really, really does help. And it shows you guys want me to keep doing Fortnite's videos in the future. With all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you all have an awesome day.